This bathroom's just full of surprises. I pulled the ceiling down. Look at the state of that. They've cut that joist off there, and then they've put this little T piece in to support it. Look at, I mean, it's, the joint has actually got to be inside the joist. Once this gets glued in, it's in forever. My name's Kirk Johnstone, and you're watching On The Trowel. Welcome to my workshop. It's crammed full of bathroom stuff. I've got me basin, I've got the drawer pack, I've got the shower screen, the shower tray, all the stuff that's gonna be going into my new bathroom is all in here in the meantime. We've started in here for a specific reason. I've built a temporary shower in here. Let me show you what I've done. First of all, I got an IBC and cut it in half. I made a hose pipe attachment so we can drain the thing down. It just goes out the door and down the grid. And then I took this damp proof membrane. This is what we use for tanking basements. I took this and made a shower screen with it. And then the shower from inside the house, I brought outside and fitted on here so we can have a shower. So this is the temporary shower situation. Now, this is the rest of my bathroom suite behind all my lime plaster and my acrylic render. There's the basin, there's the toilet down there, there's the shower screen, there's the shower tray. All that is waiting to go in. There's a bit more stuff over here piled up as well. But ultimately, we've started in here because I can only show you the temporary arrangements. The original bathroom that I've ripped out the missus wasn't happy with that one bit. She didn't like it. She was embarrassed when her friends come round. So we've took all that out now. And I'm going to show you where we got up to. I ripped everything out. I ripped the ceiling down. And this is what we found. An absolute spider's web of electrical cables. I mean, who knows what does what up there. So anyway, we'll have to come back and address that later. In the meantime, we're just going to have to keep ripping everything else out. And I also noticed about 20 years of junk that had built up inside the attic that we needed to get rid of. I want to run all the new plumbing underneath the floor, so I took all the bathroom floor up as well. But all the while, whilst I was working, it was stressing me out knowing that all that junk was in the attic, so I just had to put the bathroom on hold, I jumped up there, cleaned all that out, put some insulation down, took some new floorboards up there. And that was the outcome. Now you can move around a bit more freely up there. Oh, and all the electrical connections all went in Wagos and in Wago boxes. Um, I still might be breaking into those ones, so the lids have just stayed open on them for now. Yeah, you know, this little fella's determined to get involved. It's a good job, he only weighs about 10 kilograms, otherwise he'd just go straight through that ceiling, wouldn't he? Under the floorboards was just a complete mess. I can't even tell you how much rubbish was underneath here. I'm going to clean all this out. And I need to do something with that soil pipe as well. So, we cleaned all the floor out, all the floor space. So this is ready now. Now, there's something interesting. Look, the further you dig, the more you find. So, when they've installed this, originally, they've just chopped off that joist. There, that's as far as it goes. They've cut that joist off there. And then they've put this little T-piece in to support it. But then when they've put this in, they've just notched out of it. And look at, I mean, it's, so now we've got to replace that as well. So we're going to fix that up. Uh, we're going to take all this pipe work out. And this will be getting replaced. And this pipe work's coming out as well. And then we're going to fix all these joists up and make that good and solid. And then... Maybe we can start doing some plumbing, putting the floor back in and putting the temporary toilet in. Because at the minute, my missus is giving me because they're having to use the toilet in the workshop in the middle of the night. So it's like being back in the 30s when you have to use the outside toilet. First of all, I'll replace that bit of broken joist with some C24. Okay, so now we're going to start gluing and screwing plywood to the side of each joist. This one, I'm going to use a proper joist because that's going to be the main area where we go in and out the shower. And we've replaced all this here, so we took out the old crappy bit that they had in there that was all broken up. I've replaced that, and that is... I mean, you can hear it, you can play, you can play a tune on that now. I've put um, duct tape around the end of it and sealed the end of it, just in case any moisture was to get to that timber. So now we're going to glue and then start screwing all these joists. Because I'm moving the basin to the opposite side of the bathroom, the 32mm waste pipe will have to run through the middle of the joists to be hidden, which means that the joists might need strengthening. So what I'm doing now is a process called sistering the joists. So 
every piece of 18 mil ply is going to be glued. I'm not going to say this. So apparently when your sister had joist, you go about a foot past each side of the hole with one side of the joist reinforced. I just thought I'd do the whole length of the bathroom floor and do both sides of the joists just to be extra sure. Right, that's it. All the joists have all been reinforced on both sides. That one I could only do one side. Uh, now this one over here was a special one because they would made a mess of down here. So I've replaced all that pipe work. Um, I'm going to also join back onto that pipe because I believe that that is the overflow for my boiler. I bought a length of treated 7B2 for this. The rest of the joist I just used for down there to strengthen that side because this is going to be the main entrance here into the shower. The plumbers will laugh at me. <laughs> Look at this. I've got a... I've got this going on here. This is the blow off for the boiler. This is our cold and this is our hot. So I'm going to reduce this. But ultimately before we start even going down that route, I'm running the cold to the toilet and, the, and down towards the basin and the shower where I've got to get underneath this. And I want to try and keep it nice and neat all in one run. So I'm just doing some crazy plumbing. I put flux in the cup of every fitting and I used lead free solder to do all the joints. Now, I don't profess to be a plumber and I'll probably get ripped for me plumbing attempts, but I think I did an okayish job. I've got OCD. I'm turning into me dad. <laughs> Right, so this is the reason I strengthened all these joists up, in case you were wondering why I'd done that. It's because I've got to drill a 32mm waste pipe straight through from the basin and go straight out. Now, yeah, you can run it into, people have said to me, why don't you run it into the shower waste? But the shower waste is bigger and I, I ultimately want that to just go straight out. So the shower waste is going to be here and straight out. So... There's no benefit trying to run that to the shower waste. It's, it's like the same distance anyway. So I may as well just go straight out, keep them separate, and then you don't have to listen to any gurgling um, from, a different, from a different drain. I know you can get vacuum traps and all that, but either way, I'm not a plumber, so I'm just trying my best to do it properly. <laughs> so those holes for the waste pipe now, they're basically all drilled. I've just got a core through the wall, um, and they're they're the one in one in forty four. That's the minimum amount of fall that you're allowed. And I uh, I worked that out there on the wall. I, I measured at forty, and then um, and took an inch, and then just projected the lines further and measured how many inches it would be at the other side of the bathroom, and then just transferred all the measurements in line with the joists onto these joists. So I've tried my best. Now we'll see, we'll soon see how easy it is to feed the waste pipe in from outside. I'm sure it'll take a little bit of hammering, um, but hopefully it'll just, it'll go in fairly easy. I'm hoping, but we'll see. Um, and then he's going to pop up there inside the wall and come out roughly the same height as these guys. And that'll be inside my um, sink unit then. The unit is going to... Um, hang off the wall it's not going to touch the floor it's going to be attached to the wall and then the the, the, the basin sits on top then on a piece of like marble this is the easy bit going through the block work as soon as i get in deep enough and i can fit my sds drill in here i'll switch this uh bit over and change it to an sds bit and attach it to this and then go through the rest of the brickwork with the um with the proper drill <laughs> Come fairly neat out the brickwork. A little bit of chipping, but really, I probably should have come out with a little pilot hole and gone back in. But it's a bit awkward because the moment of truth. Want to see if they all look like they line up? So hopefully, hopefully this thing will just slide in no problem. Okay, this is the last 
awkward little bit. That, to be fair, moves in and out quite easy. I managed to get those one in 44 all in line right through the brickwork. And it's got, you know, it's tight, but it's free as well, they're not out of sync. So the last little tricky bit is to feed it into this one, but it's got to meet up. And because I want a slow bend, I could put a sharp 90, but I think it's better to have a slow bend. It sends the water better. That's got to be, the joint has actually got to be inside the joist. So it's never coming back out again. Once this gets glued in, it's in forever. So this is the fun bit. I've got to work quite quick when I do this. where the floor is going to be there and then this is an exact replica of the shower tray from that corner so that will fit like that and then I can just I can just attach that waist then that will just stay still so I've made the corner of this plasterboard the same as the corner of the shower tray obviously the tray is 900 by the full width of the bathroom but this bit's the same now if you notice I cut the the waste pipes on a funny little angle because I knew if I did it just straight out there'd be no play whatsoever whereas now I've made it where it's tight but I can literally I can move this round it's got it's a little bit forgiving you know I've got a couple of a couple of mill I can go either direction because I don't know I mean, you think that's going to be perfectly square where it is, but when the tray goes in, it might be slightly off by, say, half an inch. So I've got the play there to be able to move that round half an inch. But it's also, under its own sort of strength, is going to stay in position. So I haven't got to rummage around under the floor trying to find it. It's just sort of supporting itself there. You know, but because I've made all this pipe work, you know, I can. I've got a little bit of movement in it. I tested all the plumbing and there was no leaks, so I was happy with that. I put little metal plates over the top of where the pipes were so you couldn't screw through them. And I also added some extra support, like crisscrosses between the joists, just to stop them twisting in the future. So now I can get on with the bit that I've been waiting to do, to finally get a floor down. It's been a nightmare crawling around on top of these joists. It doesn't half hurt your knees. I don't envy plumbers and electricians having to do this sort of thing every day. I chose to use pine floorboards as opposed to big sheets of wood chip floorboarding because I feel like I can get a neater job around all the, the, the services like the soil pipe coming in and around the door casings and things like that. I also decided to screw them down rather than nail them down I was just thinking of the next guy, you know, to make it easier for anybody if they want to take it up in the future. To keep the dust to a minimum, I did the majority of the cutting outside. Now, this was mainly because I didn't want loads of dust in between the joists. Because when you pull ceilings down, which I've done lots of in the past, it's horrible when there's all sorts of stuff under the floorboards and it all lands in your face. So I thought, I'll look after the next guy and not fill it under the floor full of rubbish. So now this is, this bit really is the crucial bit in my mind, this is like the most difficult part, is to make sure that this can get onto the bottom of the shower tray. Now it just works out that the, where this attaches to the shower tray is pretty much flush with the bottom of it, it's the bit that actually sits on the floor so it's just about the right height. But the way I've actually piped it with that little C shape just means there's a bit of flexibility in it. So if it needs to go that way, it can push, it can push. You know, it can it can go forwards, backwards, and it can come up and down as where well is needed. And I've tried to give it a good, you know, inch and a half right round the edge of the floorboard so you can actually get it to wherever it needs to go um, without too much hassle. Um, so hopefully, 
we'll be able to put this in fairly easy without, without too much stress and without any leaks. You're right in the wall mate, you'll push it that way. So help me support this end. I got my brother-in-law around to help me because that thing weighs an absolute ton but I needed an extra pair of hands to help me get it up the stairs. did a dry fit just to see what it was like and it was a bit tight so we had to take a little bit more off the bottom of the wall so it would slide underneath a little yeah, bit. Set a section of board off there. Get the hoover ready. Yeah. So once we're happy with the position of this tray, I'll make sure that the, the waste pipe lines up with the, the shower tray. And once I've got all that sorted, then I'll put a nice mix of sand and cement underneath the shower tray just to hold it in position. This is why it was important that I made that trap so it could move ever so slightly. So if you see now, come here, see, I can just literally position that wherever I want it and, uh, and get the trap screwed straight in and we're good to go. Tell you what mate, you really couldn't have fit that any better, could you? I'm just putting some uh, low tack tape on the shower tray and then I put some more of this protective tape that's quite thick. That's going to protect that thing. Um, because the plasters no doubt will be in soon and you know what them guys are like so we're going to do our best to make sure that they can't wreck the place but before I do any plastering I need to get the shower valve on so I built a little support for it to sit onto and then uh, I put the shower on and I put it in with a laser because I wanted to make sure it's perfect the reason being when the tiles are on they'll show it up if it isn't straight okay so there's four of these nuts or glands or I don't know what they're called there's four of them anyway they have to go in here and then on the other end of them you get a nice little um, 15 mil olive and nut for the compression fitting for your pipes to go in but these are just threading here um, apparently you can use PTFE tape but there's stuff called Loctite that's even better now it just so happens that my local plumbers merchants don't stop stock Loctite, they use this um, rapid blue stuff. So with this stuff you just apply it to the first two threads on the female section and the male section and that's enough. I wiped off any overspill and I covered over all the holes so no dust could get inside the valve. Now it's time to get some pipe work in. Ready? Mm -hmm. We could do with the hoover to hoover all these um, bits of sawdust out and shavings. How is that loft looking? Is it oh, it's insulated? gorgeous. It's beautiful. All nice and insulated. Of course. Good stuff. Right. I don't want to do anything else up there ever again, though. It's me done in the loft. I fucking hate going in the loft. In the wrong shape to fit through the hole for the start. <laughs> Next, we boarded the ceiling with OSB board. Now, I'll tell you why in the next video. And then as soon as we've done this, it was time to get the pipe work in for the shower. I used Boss White on all the fittings. It helps lubricate the thread. And then once it goes off, it also helps waterproof the fitting as well. your toes. Oi, oi. It's attached that now. Okay, so I want that. Now, I need a little bit of boss white in that thread. This needs to be on ready because I'm not going to get the second chance of it once it's soldered in place. It's going to be a nicer way of getting boss white into the thread without me having to get it all of me fit. <laughs> Watch you don't touch that. Mm. Want some of this on your, on your little nose, do you? Ah, ah, ah. Yeah. Yeah. Watch that. I'm going to get that ready. That's going to live on there. 
and go in on its time. <laughs> He got really excited when he seen the flame. Now, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Hopefully he doesn't turn into an arsonist. We got the little fellow out of the way and I had to build some um, complicated bits, shall we say. Uh, it was a bit tricky trying to do it in situ, so I built it on the bench and then just fitted it once it was all put together. And for a plaster, that was my best attempt at plumbing. Now, the bit that went up into the loft, it actually attaches to the shower head with a flexi connector. But I put some insulation around it as well, just in case it ever froze. And I put more of those little metal plates to stop anyone screwing through a pipe. Right, so I'm just doing the switches now for all the isolation points. So I'm, we've, we've almost finished all the work to do in the, in the attic. It's all insulated. Uh, look at those Lego toys. I've saved them for little Kirk when he's bigger. Um, anyway, we're all insulated. This is the above the bathroom here. And this, I've made like a little um, little panel. This is where all the stuff's going to go. I've got my fan, the Bluetooth speaker, the electric mirror, the on-the-floor heating, and the wireless waterproof phone charger. Now, I know your fan, usually you see those um, above the bathroom door, don't you? I don't really want it to be there. I don't know if it has to go there or not. I hope not. Because uh, well, this is my house, so I'm going to sort of... Uh, I'm going to put them where I want. There's the loft insulation that's going to go on top of the bathroom ceiling when that's in. Um, once I've finished doing all the lights and the electrics for the lights, I'll put the uh, insulation down. That'll be the last job up here. i tell you what stresses me out, though. <laughs> that. I've got a drill, basically. Here, I'm going to go through these here. I've got to make a hole through the middle of each of these to bring the cables in. And uh, when I buy tools, I buy loads of them. Like I, I've I've bought a set of these, um, and brand new, and I buy two sets, you know. So I've got them. So I've always got, you know, I always want to be able to go to my workshop and just put me hands on tools. And someone's flipping pinched them. Someone's been in, right? This is what happens to me all the time. Someone comes in, they borrow me tools. And then I don't know who they are. Well, I, I will at the time. I'll know that, you know, I don't just borrow them to strangers. But I'll borrow stuff out. It never comes back. People, I've, I, had a, I had a great tile cutter. That's gone missing. I had a set of bolt cutters. Because when I've core drilled through the wall for the extractor fan, um, big four-inch hole, uh, there, was a, there was a wall tie in the way. We sort of went diagonal. And... Um, electric cable cutters wouldn't snip through it and it was like you had to put your hand inside the cavity to do it so i thought well i'll just get me little bolt cutters i've borrowed them out to somebody they're not there i've only got a massive set of bolt cutters now so i had to use them instead anyway uh, you've seen what i'm doing here this little panel um there you go now and i'm going to wire all this up and then you'll see it in a second when it's done look who's just popped up here who's, who's brought you up here Let's have a look. Oh, no one. You just come up by yourself, did you? Come here. Nice to see you, son. He's flipping uncontrollable. So now I can't leave ladders anywhere because he's learned how to climb them. I'm doing the electrics. He's just helping. Who's that? Oh, what's your head? <laughs> what you got there? Yeah, you banging your head. You're helping Daddy do the electrics. He's like Chucky. He's about the same size, but twice as terrifying. Ah. Right, that's everything wired in to the um, double poled fuse switches. Um, I've just got a well, apart from. The Bluetooth speaker, I don't know how that comes yet. I don't know if that gets wired in, hardwired, or like, you know, wired into the back of one of these, or if it'll be on a socket, in which case that'll be over there somewhere, plugged in, and the other end of the socket will be here. So, so then I can come up in the loft, and I can literally isolate anything I want. Um, I've just got to screw these faces on, but I'll do that once I get the speaker wired in. And, um, and that's it, we're good to go with the electrics. So that's us now. We are ready for um, plastering. Right, so a quick recap on what I've done. Uh, that's where all the lights went for the bathroom. All the cables for the bathroom lighting. So we've got the, 
the main feed that comes in, the feed that goes off to the rest of the house, the switch wire, and the, the feed that goes off to the bathroom light that will soon be getting changed to spotlights. Um, I also ran off that um, some lights for the attic, which are here, uh, and they've got their own switch that is over there near the hatch when you come up. So that's them. There was also a big mess of cable that went to the outside lights, which is there now, which is like a feed uh, to the lights um, that the load themselves and the switch. So I tidied that up as well. Um, oh, also coming out of that box um, because I needed a switch live and a permanent live for the extractor fan, which is now wired in and isolated over here. Um, and then the rest of all of these things that go in the bathroom have all been fed from the old shower cable which is on a 16 amp breaker now down at the board, RCD protected and they come up to these double pole switches with fuses uh, and that's going to be for the speaker, the mirror, the underfloor heating and the waterproof wireless phone charger that will be going on the boxing in or the windowsill, I haven't decided where that's going to go yet but ultimately the only thing left to wire in is the speaker, the Bluetooth speaker, which is going to go in the ceiling over there. That's waterproof. But anyway, that's all the loft done. And whilst I was up here, obviously I insulated everything properly, uh, cleaned everything out and put this uh, nice pine flooring down. Uh, and that's it. We've got two lights in here whilst we were up here. And that's my little adventure in the loft over and done with. Now we will carry on with the bathroom. Because I want to do something special with the bathroom ceiling, I've had to cut down the soil stack that went up through the ceiling out through the roof. So I've fitted an air admittance valve onto the top of the soil stack, and now I'm just going to build a boxing in for it. All the cables need chasing into the walls, so I got that done. And then I also have to get all that tile adhesive off. It's something I've been putting off for a little while, but this is basically the last point now. There's nothing else to do, so <laughs> I've got to do it. <laughs> You guessed it, it made a hell of a mess. <laughs> okay, so that's all the first fix plumbing and electrics done. So I'll just quickly recap and tell you where we're up to. First off, we've cordialed the hole through for the extractor fan. Obviously the new window went in because there was a there was a column there that went and anyway. The core drilling has been done. The cable is in for the extractor fan. All the isolated switches for every bit of the electrical stuff in the bathroom are now in the loft. The plumbing is in for the shower. This is all live. If I turn that, water literally comes out of there and that water literally will come squirting straight out of there. So we have to keep the little fellow away from them because he loves, he loves water. Um, that's ready to go. The, the plumbing is in for the basin. Uh, that goes through the floor and that's all ready to go. I just need to put a bit of pipework outside. The electrics are in for the mirror. The mirror's heated, it's got lights in it, so when you put your hand underneath it, it all it lights up and demist. The electrics are in for the underfloor heating. There's going to be a little control unit on the landing, and that's going to run down the wall and under the floor with a little thermostat so that the floor's nice and warm. Um, Plumbing's obviously in for the toilet. Now, in case you're wondering, why did the radiator pipes come out there but start over there? Okay, so my original plan, stand there a sec. My original plan was to have a towel radiator that goes right across there, but my missus has talked me out of it. She doesn't want the radiator in there. Now, one of the reasons was she was worried about it rusting. And then it triggered my mind thing about rust. So I've actually bought a stainless steel radiator. So it won't rust anyway, but still we're only having one there with like um it's like a towel radiator. So anyway, that's done. Now there's gonna be a Bluetooth speaker in the ceiling. So my daughters will be able to come in, put the YouTube on, cast it to the speaker because they love listening to the music whilst we're in the shower for six hours at a time. And as well, what I used to catch them all the time was a little charging lead coming in under the door because they'd sneak little charges and they could charge the phones whilst they were in the bath. So to try and counteract that, now what I've done is um, inside this boxing in, there's going to be a little access panel maybe here or the other side, I haven't decided yet. Um, the soil stack has been cut down and put inside there because I'm going to make a feature out of the ceiling. You'll see that in a later video. That'll be a nice little surprise for you. But I've also made a little addition in here. Check this out. I'll put that phone there. Ooh, it charges up wireless waterproof charger inside the boxing in. So hopefully 
when it's all done, they'll be happy with it, but we'll soon see. The next video you see will be me plastering this room, straightening these walls out of backcoat plaster, and then the, the third and final video will be all the tiling and the fitting of the bathroom suite. So, this is the best attempt that I can do. This is, this is a plasterer trying his hardest to be a bathroom fitter for a one-off job, never again. <laughs> I'm just sat here editing this video. I'm just looking at this thing. This is gonna be the shower head that's gonna come out the ceiling. I'm thinking, I wonder if that's big enough. You know? <laughs> sure, it'll be fine. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed that video. Now, <clears throat> ultimately, I'm not, I'm not a joiner, I'm not a plumber, I'm, not, I'm a plasterer, okay? So, um, do me a favor, if you're gonna find faults with anything I've done, Shh, don't write them in the comments because my missus might see them and I won't hear the end of it because she's been saying to me you should be going doing some plastering and pay somebody to come and do the bathroom <laughs> but I've enjoyed it you know what the old saying is don't you you know a change is as good as a break so I've enjoyed just taking a week or so off at my own home doing things at my own leisure and I'll tell you another thing as well that I've found when I'm not on the trowel when I'm doing something different I can put the tools down I can stop I can think about it Plastering's not like that. Once you've mixed the plaster, you're sort of bound. You've got to stay and you've got to carry on and see the job through to the end. Whereas when you're doing a bit of wiring, you know, you can put the, the tools down, go off, have a think about it, think if there's a better way of doing it. And I've, I've enjoyed the whole process. So if you've enjoyed watching that, just uh, bear in mind before you subscribe that it is a plastering channel. There's not going to be loads more bathroom fitting videos. This is sort of a one-off. And this is the first one, I think, of a three-part um, series that I'm going to do and um, there's going to be uh, a video of me plastering the bathroom I'm going to do something really interesting with the ceiling well I don't know interesting ish you know it's not going to be mega nothing too wild but it's going to be a little bit different so I hope you enjoy that and then the third video I'm going to do the tiling and the insulation of the bathroom putting it all in all the finishing touches so uh, hopefully that'll all go to plan and you'll enjoy that video as well Feel free to drop me a like and a subscribe. Guys, I've also had a new landing page built, so click on the little link in the description and uh, let me know your thoughts on that. I'd love to know what you think, if there's anything I could tweak on that and make it better. But ultimately, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.